Achalasia of the cardia, a rare condition that can cause dysphagia, regurgitation of food, and chest pain due to failure of the lower esophageal sphincter to relax properly. Various treatment options have been developed over the last century, including surgical hemorrhizomyotomy, endoscopic balloon dilatation, and Botox injection. But now we have a breakthrough in the treatment of achalasia, which is the peroral endoscopic myotomy, or POEM. POEM is a minimally invasive endoscopic procedure which offers a safe, effective, and patient-friendly alternative to traditional surgical and endoscopic procedures and can greatly improve patient outcomes and quality of life. In this video, I will provide a step-by-step -step demonstration of the POEM procedure, giving you an inside look of this innovative technique with tips and tricks along the way. As extra, I encountered a strong bleeding during this procedure, which is rare, and I will show you how I dealt with it. And don't forget, a shorter 3-minute video will be available by the end of this week as part of our 3 minutes endoscopy series. So sit back, relax, and experience the excitement of the POEM technique. I am Mohammed Abdel Hafiz, and this is The Endoscopist. <laughs> Before you proceed with POEM technique, remember that diagnosis is the most crucial step. One of the most causes of POEM failure is bad diagnosis. So you have to use all the available diagnostic modalities in patients who are suspected to have motility disorders like upper endoscopy, barium swallow, and manometry. I will make a dedicated video about motility disorders in the near future. I usually divide the POEM technique into five major steps. I have painted some graph illustrations to make it easier to understand. The first step is planning, which is very important to have a look at the esophagus to observe if there is any abnormal contractions or spasms, to take your measurements, and to put a strategy for your poem. For example, with classical uh, achalasia or type 1 achalasia, you will have a hugely dilated esophagus with a spasm at the region of the cardio. Step number two is the incision of the mucosa. In most of my cases, I do posterior myotomy by 5 o'clock. Try to make it a small and clean incision in the mucosa. Step number three will be the tunneling with the scope between the mucosa and the muscle layers in the submucosa or the third space. Try to reach two or three centimeters below the cardia. Step number four is the myotomy or cutting the muscle fibers. I usually only cut the circular muscles and I try to leave the longitudinal muscle fibers in peace. I start with the myotomy from proximal to distal and I try to extend my myotomy 2 to 3 cm below the cardia. Step number 5 is the closure of the incision. Usually you'll need 4 to 6 clips. It should be tight and leakage free closure. My setup for POEM is very simple. I use upper endoscope, usually Olympus 190. I use um, Herbe uh, electrosurgical unit. For injection, I usually use normal saline without adrenaline with some endigocarmine. I try to keep it uh, ocean blue uh, color, not too dark, not too uh, bright. And the most important thing is to use only CO2 for insufflation in these cases. Never use air. It's very important. The case I'm going to present today is a 76 year old female patient presented to us with regurgitation and dysphagia since years. We did all our diagnostics, we did upper endoscopy, manometry, and barium swallow, and we have a confirmed diagnosis of type 1 achalasia. As you can see here in the barium swallow, we have a hugely dilated esophagus without peristaltic, and, and the cardia is very spastic with absence of relaxation, which is typical for type 1 achalasia. After we discussed with the patients all therapeutic options, we decided to go for POEM. To give you a first-hand look at this procedure, I kept this video almost unedited, so you can witness the real-life scenario as it unfolds. So without further ado, let's head to the endoscopy room to see the POEM technique in action. So we'll start now by doing upper endoscopy. We know that this is type 1 achalasia. So we start the upper endoscopy, we've just incubated the esophagus. As we can see here, there is remnant food, which is very common with achalasia. The patient is intubated. That's why we have a very low risk of, we're on no risk of aspiration. So we usually keep the patients on liquid diet a couple of days before the examination. But as you can see here, there's still some food remnants inside the esophagus. 
But that shows us how achalasia can be very dangerous if you will do it in a routine examination, because it happens often that the patient will um, aspirate during the examination. So you have to be cautious when you're doing diagnostic upper endoscopy for patients with achalasia. So I will keep cleaning it. I will stop the video, and then I will show you after we finish this process. Mm -hmm. So it took us like uh, 10 minutes to empty the esophagus. We have now the cap from Fuji, which is a cone shape, which will help us to do the tunnels. We'll start now again with our endoscopy. As we can see here, the esophagus is dilated. So I will pause. Okay. So it's hugely dilated. And we see here this spasm at the cardia with gentle pressure, gentle pressure, and I'm in the stomach. So this is the food we pushed from the esophagus to the stomach. It's very important to see where the cardia is. It is by about 40 centimeters. And we have something like three centimeters spastic area. And now I'm planning to see where we will start. So in this case, I usually will do something like eight centimeters myotomy. And you need five centimeters above the myotomy in the tunnel, which we will leave the uh, muscle intact. So five plus eight will be 13. 13 minus 40 will be 27, 27, so something like here. We'll start our tunnel here, and we'll use our techniques to start by five hours. We'll do an opening in the mucosa, small incision, then we'll do the tunnel downwards, and we'll try to go for about two centimeters below the cardia, and after we finish the tunnel, we'll start doing our myotomy. It's very important to observe the mucosa to make sure that everything is intact. So the mucosa looks fine. I will just clean it again. Okay. We are fine. Before we start, I have every time to check that the air is standby because you are not allowed to give air in the mediastinum because you have a high risk of air embolism, which can be fatal. And let's start, as we said, here. OK, I will start by 25 centimeters. That means we will do something like 17 centimeters tunnel. We'll start with the needles. We have Igor here. Igor is one of the best endoscopic assistants in the world, I would say. So, now, I will try to inject here, here, between. We inject something like five to seven millimeter. Yeah. Now, now this is a good. Yeah. You have to see this. Okay, five milliliters is fine. We take the needle inside again, and then we'll start cutting. I try to make a small, a small incision in the mucosa because it's much better to close at the end. It would be much faster and uh, more efficient closure is possible. Here's our triangular knife from Olympus. Actually, it's very nice uh, knife to do a poem with, and you will see. Why? So I will start cutting with endocut Q, effect three. So I will go from here. As you can see here, the muscle layer is already exposed. Right, bitte. What, what is nice with this need, uh, knife, I can 
use it also to inject. So I will give some injection here. And now we'll try to dissect the submucosa a little bit to open the tunnel. Okay, Raus, bitte. Now I will use spray coag. Opening the tunnel can be one of the thickest part of the poem because after, afterwards everything will be much easier. Ryan, uh, bitte. Rose. I have to keep the muscle layer here in this area intact. Why did me? So now I'm pushing with the cap. I use the physical pressure. As I said, very important here that the muscle layer will stay intact. Take your time by this step. Now we are inside the tunnel. Ryan, bitte. So I'll start to inject again. Rose. And I will use the spray coagulation to go in the tunnel. After I open the tunnel, I will go once outside just to orient myself in this direction and to see how, in which direction should we go. And we'll come again in the tunnel. As you can see here, it's a tiny opening, which is, I find it always very nice to have. I will keep the muscle layer downwards and I will inject. So by the first two, three centimeters, I have to keep the muscle layer intact. Afterwards, I have to keep the mucosa intact. Fine. In this area, we don't have good separation between the mucosa and the muscle layer. It's sometimes because of adhesions. So we have to be cautious in this situation. Here is a vessel, so that's what's nice with this with this knife. You can coagulate the vessels cautiously, of course. And I always use the physical tra uh, um, traction or tension I can apply with the cap. Ryan did it. I'll continue again. Well.
We are doing very fine. We are reaching now 35 centimeters. Rein, bitte. I'm injecting the whole time just to protect the mucosa raus. Again, I have a very bad area here. I can't see a good separation between the mucosa and the muscle layer. Okay, I will go outside now again to have a quick look. We are here, yes. So we are reaching the, the cardia. That's why it's, it's quite difficult right now. But it's fine. Is that a video? No. So I will go again in the tunnel. So the cardia is the most tricky part during the tunnel. And if a perforation will occur, it will occur at this area. So I will try to be extra cautious. All spit it. Right. All. So I will try to keep my the, the tip of the scope nearer to the to the muscle layer because if I choose to injure one of them, mucosa or the muscle. I'll try to injure the muscle layer because we will cut it anyway. Rein, bitte. We'll try to expand our tunnel a little bit here so I will have some place. Okay. Okay. Right. So I, I will try to go through this with the cap. Rose. Oh. As you can see, the physical traction of the cap is very helpful. Sometimes it's more than enough to go a couple of centimeters downwards. So here. That looks nice. There's a big vessel here, we have to take care of it. Okay. Again, using the cap. Very nice. We are now by 40 centimeters, which means I believe we already Finish the, the cardia, so I will go like two centimeters below it. So we'll have enough myotomy. You can see this vessel here, I will leave it in peace. You can cut these vessels or you can leave them. So I like to, to leave them if it is possible. Because of course they are there for a reason, fine. I think we are now in the stomach. All is better. Again, I will leave this vessel in peace. So how to know that we are deep enough uh, with, the, with the tunnel? Some people make it uh, very sophisticated. I, I keep it simple. So it depends for me on the, how it endoscopically look, look like. So I see the bulge of the submucosa, the blue that we inject in the stomach. And from the measurements of the scope, usually I'm quite sure that I already in the stomach and then I will start my myotomy. I will start the video again so you can 
see what I mean? Here is the incision of the mucosa. As you can see here, we have here our tunnel. We can see the elevation of the submucosa reaching up to the cardia. And here is the bulge. And it goes something like here. And the, by five hours, five o'clock, it will go to the stomach, till the subcardia, till here, I would say. And this for me here, by 43 centimeters, I will go again in the tunnel and I will correlate this. We have some minor bleeding, but it's fine. So I'm here at this area. Now I think we can go a little bit deeper. So it's like 42 centimeters. As I said, I like to go two centimeters below the cardia, so we have efficient myotomy. Ah. Fine. We have a bleeder here. Rouse. Rouse. Fine. Oh, yeah, but when this thing. So I have a bleeder. I will, I will, I will just keep um, a pressure on it. Fine, fine. Uh, we can see it rows. Again, till we, you can always use the cap to apply some pressure on the bleeder. This is our graph. Uh, soft quad, let me pull on it. Swift, uh, soft, soft quad. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Much better. I'll try to clean the funnel. So we finished our tunnel now. We we'll stop the bleeding. We'll start to do our myotomy. The tunnel looks fine. Okay. So with the tunnel, we'll start five centimeters below our incision. Spray? Yeah. Okay. I will use spray coagulation to cut the, to do the myotomy. So our tunnel is here. Here we have, uh, this is 25 centimeters, no, about 30. So I will start like here, five centimeters below the incision. And Rose, bitte. So I'm cautious at the first cuts in the muscle layer. We'll try to cut the circular muscle and keep the longitudinal muscle layer intact. Here we finished it. Yeah, 
very cautiously, very slowly. Here we see here the longitudinal muscle fibers below. So I will hook at this muscle fibers and I will go with the scope minimally, very gently upwards and will cut. Oops. Here we cut. We have here a big vessel again. Sometimes I use near focus mode just to check the pattern of the fiber. We still have some metal fibers here, but we can refine all of this afterwards. It looks fine. It looks still looks fine. Very good. Here is the cardia. Huh? Here is our main bulk of muscles. As you can see here, the muscle is becoming feel thicker. Very slowly under vision. If you have a lot of fibrosis or you can't see the layers, make it just layer by layer till you go deep. I will check where I am. So I am by 40 centimeters, so I'm entering the stomach now. So I will cut something like two centimeters from the stomach. That looks fine. I will cut this very nice. We have here the serosa behind. Okay, I think this would be our last cut here. That's fine. So, I think we finished our myotomy. We will refine the myotomy. Now we can see here the longitudinal fibers, which we leave in peace. I will just withdraw a little bit backwards and have a look. I will cut this here, the hospital. Okay. As you can see here, the longitudinal fibers are very thin. You can see here the adventitia through the Muscle fibers, sometimes the mediastinum will be open, the spine also. I will go further backwards. Here, I will cut this one. So I will hook like this. And it looks fine. Very nice. I always love to see the longitudinal muscle fibers like here now.
Okay. Fast. Yeah, okay. So I believe we finished our myotomy, so I will check the lumen from outside to see that everything is fine. I'll do some suction press, make the tunnel clean. That was our bleeder, which we did with Quagraspa. Uh, so I will go outside now. Some suction, and the cardia should be open for us. Yes, very nice. So if you see alumina, I'm not press, uh, doing any pressure in this area. I'm just pushing the scope very gently, and it's quite open, which for me is also a second confirmation that it's fine. I check the mucosa here to see if there is any perforations. There is no perforation. It looks fine as well. So, so at the end of our myotomy, we usually um, wash the, media, uh, the, the tunnel with gentamicin. There is no evidence for that, but that's the way how we do it. Okay. So we'll inject now the gentamicin with some normal saline. And the last step now is the closure of the tunnel. It's one of the most important steps because if you don't do it well, you have a perforation. That's why in the beginning I did a very small opening. I like to keep the incision small. Usually you need five to six clips to close it. So we will see now. Okay, I'll put it. So the first clip. Okay. Uh, okay. So the first clip will be, I will set it here below the lower end of the incision, so up. So it will bring the edges together. And then I will try to, to close the, the incision. So I will need something like I think I will need four clips or five clips for this area. We will see. Out with it. So, very nice. So, up. If your incision is something like four centimeters, it will be very difficult to close, and you are always uncertain if it is enough or not what you did. That's what we have learned with time, is to keep the incision small and clean. Out with it. It's very important to take with the, with the clip the two edges, it's always two, two, yeah. up. So it's completely closed now. I put another clip just for to be sure that everything is fine, you have to go from the left or the right edge first to see that the clips are holding the fold. And then I will go from the other side. And as you can see here, it looks very, very fine. So I'll put a clip upwards and maybe another clip here just to make more tension on the, on the edges. Outfit it. Up. So. so this extra clips is just no only for for security in case one clip will go up out. Up, perfect. So. So the examination is finished. We'll do now barium um, swallow to see that everything is fine. And that's it.
Thank you. Welcome back. So in conclusion, POEM is an elegant, minimally invasive technique that can provide remarkable outcomes for patients with esophageal motility disorders. While this case was a straightforward case with type 1 achalasia, there are many different scenarios that can add challenge to the POEM technique. If you are interested in seeing more challenging cases, please let me know in the comments below. If you find this video helpful, please consider liking and sharing it with your colleagues and peers. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay updated with our future videos. Thanks for watching, until the next video. Ciao.